So back in middle school, I had a crush on this one girl. Let's call her Margaret. And although we didn't talk, we were friends on Facebook. One day I had a friend over and my Facebook was unlocked while I went to the bathroom. And I came back, saw that he messaged Margaret from my account. And me and her basically never talked to each other again after that. Now that was rough, and to say it was a time of suffering would be an understatement. I truly thought my entire love life was over. Cause you know you're in middle school, and you're pretty short-sighted, and having a crush is like you're in some sort of fairy tale. But even though post-incident Paul was probably more sad than pre-incident Paul, that doesn't mean it was an entire loss. I learned from it. I learned, hey, stop being shy and only interacting with people online. Since I f***ed it up with Margaret, I had to look for other fish in the sea. And that helped me move past one-itis. And most importantly, I learned to delete Facebook and never have that friend over again. Okay, until Halo Reach came out and I wanted someone to play with. But what if, in that moment of suffering before I learned my lessons, some savior came up to me and was like, hey, it's not your fault, it's everyone else's fault. You're completely in the right and Margaret is really the one losing out here. Well, it'd probably make me feel better, but I wouldn't learn from my mistakes if I was told that I made no mistakes in the first place. I wouldn't grow and evolve and ultimately become a better person out of that experience. And Nietzsche would probably agree. He'd probably go to that savior and tell him to s*** you off. You see, Nietzsche embraced suffering. He thought it was not only a personal experience, but one that helps us experience joy. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. What's up friends, it's Paul from Philosophy Tunes, and today we're covering Nietzsche's writing on the will to suffer and the compassionate, from the Gay Science Book 4th, section 338. Now, I'd actually want this video to be a little bit more interactive. I want you right now to try and reflect on a moment of suffering that you've gone through in your life. It could be anything from super emotional to super embarrassing, just try and reflect on that moment. And you could put it in the comments if you want, but I also recognize that these can be kind of personal. Like I'm guessing you don't want to share about the time you sh** your pants during calculus. And don't try and be all stoic and act like you haven't suffered in life. I mean Christ, you know it ain't easy. You know how hard it could be. The way things are going, they're gonna crucify me. So getting into the actual text, Nietzsche is gonna start by acknowledging subjectivity when it comes to suffering. That from which we suffer most profoundly and personally is almost incomprehensible and inaccessible to everyone else. In this matter, we are hidden from our neighbor even when he eats at the same table with us. Kinda makes you think about the distinction between empathy and sympathy. Empathy is understanding and comprehending the pain someone else feels while sympathy is feeling sorry for that person. It seems from this quote that Nietzsche might exclude empathy as a possibility altogether. And I mean, maybe he's right. I mean, when we lose someone close to us, like a family member, although someone else has lost a family member as well, can they really understand what we're going through? There's all these factors that play into our emotions with infinite variety, and it seems pretty bold to assert that you 100% identify with those factors. But hey, maybe you disagree. I wasn't a psych major and perhaps they have some more insight. So next, Nietzsche mentions this character of the sympathizer who tries to help someone who's suffering but might end up doing more harm in the end. This is because Nietzsche sees some value in suffering. There is a personal necessity for misfortune. That terror, want, impoverishment, midnight watches, adventures, hazards, and mistakes are necessary to me and to you as their opposites. To speak mystically, the path to one's own heaven always leads through the voluptuousness of one's own hell. That's a pretty cool quote, I mean let's hand it to him there. Now if you read closely, it almost sounds like Nietzsche is seeing a yin yang here with suffering and joy. They're necessary opposites. The painful moments make the happy moments possible. In your life, I imagine that you've accomplished something great. I mean, you're subscribed to this channel, so you've got to be quite the success. But doesn't the joy you get after working hard for something outweigh the joy you get after hardly working for something? The pain, sweat, and tears you go through makes that end goal oh so much better. Like if I started this channel and day one I got 100,000 subscribers, sure it'd be cool and let's not lie to ourselves, I'd be super happy. But working on this thing and eventually get into that goal through video after video is probably going to be so much more rewarding. Think about an example in your life where you overcame some big obstacle that's caused suffering. Think about how you felt after you pushed through to reach your goal. Feel free to share that experience below. I'm assuming you'll be more willing to share about that than the time you shit yourself. To further drill in this point that suffering and joy go hand in hand, consider this other awesome quote. Ah, how little you know of the happiness of man, you comfortable and good-natured ones. For happiness and misfortune are brother and sister, and twins. 
who grow tall together, or as with you, remain small together. Now Nietzsche does recognize that it feels good to run towards compassion when we're in a state of suffering. He even refers to it as running towards the temple of the religion of pity. But just because something feels good doesn't mean it is good. Drugs are the easy example here. But maybe we should try to find some middle ground. Sometimes the suffering is very severe, and it may be naive to just tell the person to push through because they'll be better off in the end. Should we try and find a compromise between being overly protective and being overly neglectful? Or should we favor one side of the scale? Now Nietzsche does have an important exception to make, and that is with friends. But just to clarify, Nietzsche is defining a friend as someone who'd actually be able to fully understand your pain. Thou wilt also want to help but only those whose distress thou entirely understandest, because they have one sorrow and one hope in common with thee, thy friends. But Nietzsche says, look, you know what's good for helping yourself, right? You know becoming stronger as a result of this suffering is what's best for you. Therefore, since you and your friends should be on the same page, you'll want that for them as well. I guess the question to really ask yourself is, when your friend is having a problem and it's taking an emotional toll on them, are you more of an emotional comfort type of friend or a problem solver friend? Are you going to try and help your friend out emotionally through nice words? Or are you going to try and help your friend out in relation to the problem? Nietzsche seems to side with the latter, but where do you side? Did Nietzsche change your mind? Comment below and let us know. And hey, that's the end of the video. Guys, it's gonna be finals time, so the next couple of videos might be short. Plus, I'm doing a study abroad thing in Spain during June, so I'll try to pre-record some videos to upload then, so I could fully experience the country instead of making videos. Cause you know, that'd be pretty stupid if I go to a new country and I'm just on my laptop the whole time. If you enjoyed the video, then you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And with that, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.